Hi, I'm Kim Soltarski from Toronto, Canada. I'm a writer, director, filmmaker, songwriter, husband, friend, father, ex-farm boy, and oh yeah, I'm bald. Bald! Bald! Baldy! Bald! Bald! Baldy, baldy, baldy! And though I may appear to be just another pretty bald face, I'm sharing something with you today that's very personal. So personal, in fact, many of my friends don't even know this story until now. It was the spring of 2014 and I was producing a documentary about a man who at the age of 50 dove wholeheartedly into the world of slam poetry. It was then that I got the call, the call that no one ever wants to get. It was my dermatologist telling me that I had melanoma skin cancer. A couple weeks earlier, I had an innocent looking mole on the side of my temple right here removed by him. I should let you know that I have had basal cell cancer for 20 years or so, just little spots here and there that would be removed with liquid nitrogen or be, being cut out. And I was told as long as I wear sunscreen, which I lather myself in, I really have nothing to worry about. So I really thought nothing of it when I asked him to remove the mole because I shaved my head every day and I thought, I don't want to mess with this mole. But then things really changed when he called me. I knew melanoma was a very serious disease. In fact, I had a friend die of it a couple years earlier. But I also knew I had a lot to live for and I had a lot going for me. I had an incredibly supportive and wonderful wife, Wendy, two fantastic kids that I adore, Maya and Jason. So I decided I wasn't gonna let this be a death sentence or affect the quality of my life. I was scheduled for surgery six weeks later to remove the mole and confirm the cancer staging. To clarify, I didn't have any symptoms from the cancer. I didn't have any pain, it hadn't spread anywhere from my body that I was aware. I didn't have any swollen lymph nodes. So I had a lot going for me. And I felt really lucky that for somehow I had this very early cancer diagnosis to help me in my battle with it. In the meantime, I reached out to a few close friends and I changed my diet to a plant-based sugar-free one since I discovered that meats, sugar, and carbs feed cancer. And I continued my regular acupuncture and Chinese medicine therapy. Then another piece of the healing puzzle really came into play when a friend of a friend told me that he had cured himself of melanoma and lung cancer using something called Rick Simpson oil also known as full extract cannabis oil. I discovered that Rick Simpson was a Canadian cannabis advocate who helped himself and hundreds of others with a whole range of illnesses in his little community in Nova Scotia, Canada. And he went on to become really what is the godfather of the do-it-yourself cannabis healing movement. So much so that he became a target of the Canadian government and had to flee to Europe to live in exile. I have a great deal of hope now because this is happening worldwide. You know, there's many, many countries now looking at this or many people looking at this in a whole different way, finally. So I do see a bright future, you know, and I think that actually the whole future of medicine is going to revolve around these cannabinoids that these extracts contain. I'd use cannabis recreationally. You know, I'd sort of heard that it could help heal things, but I didn't really pay any attention until my life depended on it. So I decided to follow Rick's protocol of ingesting 60 grams of cannabis oil in 90 days, which I started just before my surgery. Cannabis was illegal at the time in Canada, but like Jack Kungle, the inspiring subject of one of my documentaries on medical cannabis says, I'm illegally alive instead of legally dead. <laughs> the surgery went well, and they even removed two basal cell cancer spots in the middle of my forehead and sewed me up, gave me this really cool Harry Potter scar. But it was scary. It was like really scary because you realize how a cancer diagnosis, the surgery and all the things that come with it can change the course of your life so drastically and so quickly. This was all new to me. I mean, I had been in the hospital once before, like 20 years ago for a minor surgery overnight. I hadn't done any pharmaceutical drugs. I ate well, I exercised, I got an incredible circle of friends. I love my work, though admittedly I'm a bit of a workaholic, but this all, I don't know, it was just so new to me, but with the cannabis and my positive attitude, I healed really quickly. The surgery verified it was melanoma stage 3B. That means the melanoma had passed through the skin membrane into my body, and that's a place you don't want it to be. In fact, they found a little speck of it here in uh, my lymph node. But the good news was, with all the ultrasounds and CAT scans I did, it was nowhere else. 
So I was in a really good position to stop the spread, reverse it, and not let it take me down. Now I had a neck surgeon, an oncologist at Princess Margaret, one of the top cancer hospitals in Canada here in Toronto. And because it hadn't spread anywhere, they did have a few things they suggested. They didn't want to cut me from ear to ear and remove all my lymph nodes. But after studying the pros and cons of that, I passed on that option. They'd had an experimental drug. And basically I would be in the hospital for a month, get an injection, it'd be the worst month of my life they described it as. And then I'd go home for 11 months and in inject myself with the experimental drug as well, and that would be like having the flu. So I thought, you know, a year of that, that's, that's not something I'm gonna entertain. After researching the limited benefits of the things they had to offer, I stuck with my plant-based healing, and I am glad I did. I happily continue my sugar-free, low-carb, plant-based diet, do daily exercise, and ingest cannabis in a variety of forms as part of my cannabinoid therapy. I am now licensed by the government to grow my own medicine, which is the ultimate in having power over my health. My cancer journey made me healthier and stronger than I've ever been. And more importantly, it really helped remind me to live life with gratitude so I can be the best friend, father, husband, coworker, whatever it is I can be. We are all love, given without condition. We are all love, blessing our children. We are all love, living one breath at a time. And throughout this journey, I wondered, how can I pay it forward? How can I share my story? And, and sharing it with you is one little way, but I went on to produce documentaries about the benefits of medical cannabis. And I was amazed. I met a whole range of people, all ages, all different backgrounds, who used medical cannabis and plant-based diets to help with their cancer, their MS, fibromyalgia, COPD, insomnia, chronic pain, and reduced effects of epilepsy. I'm forever humble and grateful that they allowed me to have an insight to their world and suffering and triumphs and share their stories. And I'm also very grateful that I could share my story with you today. It's been an incredible journey and I can honestly say it's made me a better person. I chose the alternative medicine route, but for others, a combination of that with traditional Western medicine works. Each person has to decide what works for them. And no matter what you do, remember, only you can heal yourself. So just be wise with the tools that you use to do exactly that.